Hey guys, Sean Terry here, and we are live uh, with the Speaker Spotlight Extreme Freedom 2019, October 25th through 27th, and one of our premier speakers, everybody's been talking about, the guy's blown up across the entire country, is uh, Corey Peterson, and he went from wholesaler to real estate syndicator and has built an empire um, and uh, has done it in such an incredible fashion, um, and he's such an awesome guy. He actually lives locally here uh, in uh, the Phoenix metropolitan area, um, and I've seen him transform. We would compete um, in Google AdWords and direct mail and stuff like that, but I've seen him transform to go from the hustling after the the next deal when it comes to uh, real estate wholesaling to building passive income. and. Um, it's amazing to see what he's accomplished uh, in such a short period of time. So, Corey, what's up, Big Daddy? What's up, brother? Man, I, up? I, thanks for the introduction because it's been a journey, man. But it's oh, it's dang, it's good. It's been a journey. So, our whole methodology, um, especially with extreme freedom and what I teach, and, and it goes right along with what you teach, is you know you use uh, wholesaling to create active cash flow this active cash flow so um it's money coming in you know and uh and then you uh you can keep your lifestyle the same and use the excess money to invest into passive cash flow right so um you came to the point where you've done a ton of wholesaling you've created that active cash flow you put that money into passive cash flow and now your passive cash flow is your sustaining your life in your business to where you can you know make a half a million five hundred eight hundred seven eight hundred thousand dollars a year passive income without having to do any um wholesale deals ever right which is pretty cool i'm so everyone listening here now imagine having half a million dollars a year five six hundred thousand dollars a year coming in having a management team managing it and doing it without your influence maybe getting on well you're getting on a call once a month i think you do with your the uh, like investor call or something yep yep that's about it that's about <laughs> it so let's, let's let's talk about your your wholesaling days yeah and then that 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 switch that flipped and, and you kind of, you saw the light when it came to the apartment thing, so. Yeah, you know, I started off, so the whole center thing was a very much a, a needed aspect of my life. When, you know, once Fix and Flip went out the door, uh, I really transitioned to the wholesaling business. And just like everybody else, you're, you know, you're doing a lot of direct mail marketing. Um, you know, we weren't really doing RVM at that point in time, but we were definitely um, direct mail heavy, uh, pay-per-click, yep. all that stuff. But I really transitioned and did my first apartment deal in 2011. But the problem was it wasn't sustaining me. It wasn't enough income just to say, hey, I'm done. Um, I, I kept it right. in the incubator and I kept wholesaling. Um, it really almost to the point of where my first deal become um, had a baby, right? Like in other words, we had uh, kept it for uh, rough, roughly five years. And when we sold that asset, we bought a property for 3.2 million bucks. Right. And, um, I think I, I sold it for 8.8 .8 million dollars five five years later. Wow. So, True. but but let's take it back to where you're you're actually doing wholesaling. Okay. And the problem is that you have you I know when you know wholesaling and you you do a deal for a hundred thousand, you do a deal for two hundred thousand. So yeah. we see a deal for 3.2 million. Um, I know, you know, when, uh, initially when I was looking at it, that was out of my realm. Um, I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I have what it took to do it. How did you bridge that gap, that mental gap from doing a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a wholesale flip, um, to, or a fix and flip to where now going to a $3.2 million deal? What was that mind shift? Man, the mind shift was like, why not? It truly, it was actually out of, I felt like I felt I was running around with the hustle and grind, the, the challenge with the wholesale business is you're only as good as your last deal. And you have right. to keep on feeding that machine. And, um, and really it's a great, it's a great lifestyle. But what I was seeing is like, man, is this ever, is this ever going to change for me? And, you know, I go back to Robert Kiyosaki and I was like, man, I wanted time and money. I wanted both. And I felt like, I, you know, I would either have to grow my wholesale business to, I think the next level. Cause at that point I was doing most of the work and, um, right. And for me, it was just like the mind shift was, man, if I do this now, what will it pay off later? And I was, right. honestly, I was nervous as hell. And so really it's about education, getting educated, 
uh, just like you know, you teach wholesaling step one, two, and three. I had to go get educated into the apartment world of those, you know, and what it means to play at that level. And what I found out is it's really not as difficult as most people think. Um, it's actually in, in ways simpler. Uh, and right. that's, that sounds weird, but it really, when you play the game right and you play this, because it's playing the long game. And that's just, right. you know, the, the wholesaling is, man, you can keep what you kill and you get it immediately. Right. Um, apartments is a five-year process and for most people that's daunting right yeah but, but it's not really, no, but, but when it comes to income though it's it, it seems like with apartments you you know you, you first you got to locate the deal you got to define the deal that you're looking for right and then you've got to locate actually locate the deal now you're, you're this particular one was 3.2 million what made it a deal for you yeah, the, well, what it made a deal for me is that I saw uh, the surrounding area, and I was like, "Gosh, they're charging two hundred dollars more for rent than we are. Right. Their units are only this much more better." So I was like, "Man, if we could buy this thing and put the work in and get to that right. level of, we could be able to charge two hundred dollars more per door." Right. So I immediately knew, and it was in a good location, good bones, good structure. But right. it was it was an REO property when we bought it. It was bank owned. Oh, really? So it was a bank owned deal, and it was in the rents were two hundred dollars less than surrounding. So you had a potential rent bump in the deal, uh, which is pretty big. Okay, and it was an REO, so it was, uh, yeah, it was an REO. So like I remember this was in South Carolina, and I still lived here in Phoenix. So it was mm -hmm. like all the way across the pond, right? Yeah, and so exactly. all the time, I was like, man, this has got to be. A, a deal deal like I got to know within everything that I am that it's a deal because it's way far away and yeah. so when we got there it's like three and miles it's your first deal too it's your first deal so you got to make that you can't blow you can't you can't you can't strike out on the first deal <laughs> you know that was my m and was like get one shot you no know, to change your life forever and so we're vetting the deal and we're like okay Three miles down the road is like Walmart, the Home Depot, the Lowe's, like all the A type of really nice stuff. And we're like, gosh, this isn't a good look. I mean, this isn't a great location. Um, it was in Greenville, South Carolina. And Greenville is a super growing little um, neighborhood that's got like um, Firestone and Bridgestone and, um, you know, really some um, BMWs right down the road where they build all the BMWs. And like it had great bones of the whole uh, structure. It was an educated population. Um, it so was, was So Katie's uh, asking, how many units was it that was, was this built? 142. So it was 142 units. And what was the year built? Do you remember? 1960, like 72, 1972. So it was a, essentially a class C apartment yep. complex, 1972, but it was in a great location and it needed Obviously, some work to the property and needed rent bumps. Okay, so now, now remember, now go back. Everyone listening right now is wholesalers, right? So they're wholesalers. They're used to flipping houses, getting the cash, and now you get this three point two million dollar deal on the other side of the planet. You believe it's a good deal. Now you're going. How do I come up with the three point two million? Right. That's that. That's the because it's an REO property. So you've actually. It's not. It's not. You can't. You can't tie it up and try to flip it. You're not, not going to flip it. You're essentially going to buy it and own it. So, um, so, uh, so when when you start ex exploring, actually finding the money to purchase the property, what did that look like for you? And it was scary at first because we we're like, gosh, there's no way we can uh, pull this whole thing off. So we initially said, is there any bridge lenders? Is there like a any type of financing? that we can get on this property. And we actually found a group that would, and they would do like a 65% LTV loan. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, and so we looked at that. So we ended up looking at the deal and said, we were going to have to bring in $1.4 million of equity to, gotcha. do, to buy. It. You found a lender that would lend it uh, on the property and you, you guys came in and would, would fund 1.4 million, right? Yeah, so, so now yourself and say you probably didn't have as a real estate wholesale, you probably didn't have 1.4 million laying around, right? No, 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 no. no. So you didn't have the 1.4 and you didn't have the you know, you know, 
Now, did you have to get someone to help you qualify for the loan at the, at that particular time? So you had a, a sponsor or someone came on. Partners, you. I had two actually. So it's funny how when I came into the deal, these I didn't even own the deal. I, I wasn't even on it. It was two other guys that had got into the deal, and they were uh, going to lose the deal if they couldn't come up with money. Right. And so they had it under contract. They chose me. We negotiated a, a, a contract. But I started to go find $1.4 million. And right. I, I was nervous as all get out. I didn't know if I could, but they did have some experience. And gotcha. so I used them. And that's the great thing about this business in the multi right. side. It's a lot of times it's a team sport. I mean, listen, me and you were playing on a team sport. We're doing some deals together. That's right. how it happens in multifamily. Right. Which is great. So what the cool thing is, so so people listening right now, let's say theoretically you're 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 a wholesaler, you're doing deals, and you want to bridge and do essentially a three point two deal. It's over a hundred plus units, um, but you you don't believe you can qualify for the loan, right? Then guess what? You can have a partner that qualifies for the loan. Let's say you don't have the one point four million dollars. Well, guess what? You now now let's talk about what happened during that one point four million. Now you've never really raised money before. You might have raised money for. Did you did you raise any money before for your single family flips? Okay, so I, I did. Have, I was, did have a small flipping business that we were using private capital to fund some of those, and that's really what I leveraged. Honestly, is gotcha. I had a little bit of a couple of relationships. Um, now knowing what I know now, I, the process is a lot easier. Is even oh, as yeah. a seller, you you start putting the framework of here's where I'm going. I've got this business that's sustainable, but what you start building is telling a longer, your long play, your legacy play is what you're building and you're going to be uh, using investors to do that. And correct. that's the correct way. I, of course, I didn't have that instruction when I was started. I was just on a mad dash and I'm telling you. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise 1.4 million. I'm going to talk to everybody and I'm going to see who's, who, who's available. So, um, so you ended up raising the 1.4 million, right? I did. And what was the chunk? What was the average chunk size? Did it, did you have a guy that came in and gave you a million, and another guy that gave you 400 thousand, or was it at increments of 50 to 100 thousand? What was your average that you did? So 50 to 100 thousand dollars. It's always man in the beginning. That's usually what it is. It's 50 thousand, yeah. 100 thousand. Sometimes a 300 thousand dollar chunk. Um, but it was really just a bunch of uh, smaller type of investors. Um, uh -huh. It was friends and family at that point. My first deal, it was, I called everybody that I'd ever done a deal with. I found uh, other wholesalers that had extra, some excess cash. They didn't have hundreds of, you know, 500,000, but they had 100K or 50K. They're like, yeah, that sounds like a good deal. And what am I going right. to do with the money, right? Because right. um, people still want, you know, they want a consistent return and they don't trust the stock market. And right. what I found is if I can compete with the stock market with people's IRA money, that yeah. is nirvana. Well, once I understood that piece, Sean, that's when yeah. I got a lot, lot more consistent money and bigger uh, amounts of it as well. Yeah, because people, I mean, that what's their only investment source? You know, is going to their uh, broker, their whatever, and then they, their, or their, they take their money and they put it in for it. And what happens is they put it in the market. And the market is the market been going well now, right? But but the market definitely goes up and down, and we don't know yeah, when it's going to. Yeah, a week ago, though, right? Like you know, like when people laugh. Down eight weeks, right? And people are like freaking out, going, "Oh my gosh, it's a recession!" Right? So it's uh, it's amazing. So um, so that brings you to that that particular that that deal. And then was there any issues closing it? Were you right down to the wire? Was there was there some hang up that came up or what? <laughs> no, you, like this is scripted, but it's not because I'm telling you, it, I mean, every deal is like this. I swear, I'm a nervous wreck until I close, and it's funny how it works. But like up until you know two days before we're supposed to close, I'm about three hundred thousand dollars shy of all the money, and you know, uh, you're just it's really about timing. Some people are like, listen, I want to invest, but like. I'm just waiting for this other thing to come in before I or sell or close, and um, so yeah, it you don't was, get time. You gotta close, <laughs> right? Oh man, and really, it's you know, um, but man, I didn't waver from the belief that I think I could do it, and I was just like, man, listen, I'm going to call, 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 
and I just I leveraged every relationship that I ever had. Um, you know, for some of the people that said they were going to it, I really did a, you know, listen, you told me, you gave me your word. I need that hundred thousand. I mean, really, and just pushed them to it. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's what it takes is a lot of, you just got to bulldog it, but right. when it done. It was like, yes, I got it done. Got it done. And then we started to do the work, right? So then we're now, it's, just, it's still, we have to operate the deal and right. follow the business plan. But we did, and we executed the business plan exactly how we saw it. And and three years later, we got those $200 bumps in rent. Yep. And that's when everything changed for that apartment. Like, really, all of a sudden, three years down the road, now I'm making cash flow. I'm making, I'm making money. First two yep. years, we didn't really make a whole lot. But that right. third year, when we were able to do all the work and now put the best tenants in it, that's when it like the light bulb clicked off is this is really working. Wow. And by that fourth year, we're like, dude, it's working great. Right. So you're doing now, did you, will you continue wholesaling as you as those two or three years passed? Um, and then still looking for other apartment deals or, yeah. or I kept yeah. trying to load the gun, right? Cause, but I didn't have enough income to like, you know, when you're, when you're doing a decent level of wholesaling, that's a pretty nice income that you're making every month. And so, I was like, man, I just can't stop from, you know, from, from zero. And so it was really in that fourth year that I was like, man, okay, I can take my foot off the gas. And right. you know, like, let me really change my focus a little bit more on the multifamily side. By this time we had um, this was, uh, probably three apartment deals working at this, at this point in time. Um, right. We've sold a couple now. now. We have six active projects that we have right now. And those six active uh, pay me, I mean, really in excess you know, I don't want to say the number, but it's a good amount of it's a good amount of money, Sean. Yeah, and, so it's a, yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's, it's like, like last year. I just put this on my Facebook page, but um, I got two point five million dollars in depreciation this year. Yeah, like that's so a, a lot of people what depreciation is, but as a wholesaler, you create active active income. I mean, you create uh, ordinary income, right, which is taxed at the highest percent depending on where your tax bracket is. Yeah, so now you got a depreciation on there of two point seven million dollars. I mean, that's that that will that will offset, you know, pretty much. Dude, you don't have to pay any tax. That's a flat out hell of a game changer, because like, listen, if you made half a million dollars in wholesaling income, I mean, hell yeah, good for you. But when you got to stroke two fifty to Uncle Sam, you kind of right. like jaw drops and hits the ground. And you're like. Oh, uh, you know, you want to do a Barney Rubble and get it on your machine and get out of Dodge. You're like, what the hell? Right. You have an apartment complex that you own and you can say, well, hold, no, no, hold on. Let me just put this on it and give you that 2.5 million. So you can make that whole, you get to offset all that and keep that whole half a million dollars of income. Right. It's not what you make. It's what you keep that counts. And when you can keep your money, that's magic. Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, that's a great I mean because you know you create such ordinary income in this business, but you then you end up paying huge amount of taxes. That's been that's been one of my biggest things that I just especially because you're fixing flipping and you have have some rentals and stuff, but you can't do a cost segregation study like you can with these apartment complexes and stuff. It, so well. so, uh, it becomes the uh, it's it sucks. It's terrible. Um, but now obviously I'm getting like. Because I, I, I believe you can always have a wholesaling business that, because, and especially the way you teach it, Sean, is it, it becomes a machine. It works for you. Yeah. Consistently provide income streams. All you want to say is, listen, I'm going to take that cash and I'm going to leverage my relationships and start building my legacy portion of what I'm doing. That that one day I can I can just walk away from it all and just be that that true I quadrant that Robert Kiyosaki talks about. And where you have income showing up for work that you you did one time way back when, right? And, and the magic you're, you're, out, getting income, you're getting income from deals you did three and four and five years ago, right? Yeah, you know, so, yeah. And, and, and you and get Sean, huh? everybody, all your tenants expect rents to go up, okay? And we never disappoint them, ever. Ever. <laughs> yeah, you make sure they absolutely do that. So, yeah, um, so, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, fifteen dollars every month. You know, fifteen dollars, right? At least every 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 time they re up, right? Yeah, yeah. We're going to raise the rents a little bit. If not, right. we're going to raise as much as we can. But we're always going to get something. And when we do that, our values of our properties keep going up, and so we're self fulfilling our own payment increases in our income. We have a rising income stream every time because rents go up. Right. Thing. So, okay, so um, we've got Stream Freedom coming up October 25th to the 27th. You're one of the um, keynote speakers that's going to be speaking there, and you're going to talk about um, that transition to go from a wholesaler and then and then build that legacy wealth um, without giving away the whole presentation. Can you give a, a hook that would inspire someone that's listening right now or watching this video here in the future, watching us live, that would say, listen, I have to be there? Man, the hook is, first of all, just learning how to raise private money. If there's anything that I've ever done that's different than most of the people that I started with in, in this career of, of, of multifamily apartments, the one thing that I feel like I've mastered is that ability to raise capital. And it starts with, hey, what do you do, Corey? You know, it really, we, we start, that's how I teach it, is from the moment you shake somebody's hand that you don't know, and they say, hey, Sean, what do you do? And I'm listening. It's you don't do real estate, by the way. We never, we never are going to do real estate. We're going to say, hey, listen, I buy apartments across the country that I provide my investors with a solid return and a nice back end. You know, we provide income. We're an alternative to the stock market. How's right. the market treating you? Right. And when we have that, and when when I say how's the market treating you, guess what we're going to start talking about? Money. Money. Right. And we're, we are never conditioned to talk about money. And if there's one thing that we got to learn how to do in this business of syndication is we got to feel real comfortable with talking about money. And listen, I'm going to make it so simple because I started from nothing. I never had any money. I didn't know anybody with money. Um, my family didn't have any money. I had everything stacked against me. So right. if you do this business, I promise I I had to reverse engineer the steps and the processes all throughout it. That's what I'm going to bring to this event is that knowledge and unpack it in a way that you're going to say, I can do it. Because if Corey can do it, I'll crush it. That's look, I talk out of one side of my mouth. I'm kind of a, you know, I don't look like Sean Terry. I look like <laughs> I'm the guy carrying the axe of the Tolkien story. Okay. Right. I got the axe. But listen, it doesn't matter where you're at because you can play this game and people will trust and learn to trust you and will give you their money. And that's right. a powerful thing, Sean. Yeah, because it's amazing because, you know, when it when you have the ability, just like you said, to raise capital, then there is no deal that you can't do that's at your fingertips. There is no – so, you know, the market will correct in the future. And I believe that when it does correct, we don't know when it's going to correct. We don't know the date. But building those relationships today and being good with those relationships today, then the properties that we're essentially buying now at 40, 50, 60, 80,000 a unit, those same properties are going to be available at 30, 40, 20, 30, 40,000 dollars a unit the same exact way. And we'll be able to scoop in and buy those and build. Uh, even bigger portfolio faster because those properties will essentially be 50% off. There, I'm telling you, there's going to be a day and it's coming. We don't know when, Like, I, but listen, it's called farming your capital, getting your capital ready. And you know, you can still do, like I'm still buying deals today. We're still buying deals to get today. Um, yeah. But you gotta be selective, right? We'll teach you how to be selective. We'll talk about how to underwrite, how to do it properly. Most people do it wrong and that's okay. But we'll teach you the correct way to do it, and we'll provide you with enough uh, education that you'll you'll come out of it saying, "Listen, if I do this thing right, I can provide legacy wealth, generational money." Not like we're not yeah. just talking about, "Hey, I just want to make a living." We're talking about your kids' kids. That's a right. good thing, Sean, and um, that yeah, I mean, is really the value of multifamily apartments. So, so how many, w once we close this deal in Oklahoma, how many would you have now under, under management? So how, many, have, how many cash flow units? Cash flow units. Yeah, I think uh, it'll be like, uh, 
seventeen hundred units or something like that. Like, listen, yeah, there's that's cool. more, but like now, the way I do it, I own most of, I own the a biggest, a big percentage of my deals, and the reason why is I teach how to raise money cheap. Most syndicates right. out there, they do it honestly, flatly, they do it wrong, in my opinion, because. Listen, you don't have to give up the farm in money. Money is right. taking us, deal makers. And right. all you have to do is compete with the stock market. And those right. investors are conditioned to think six and eight is great. So if you can offer a better return than six and eight, uh, a type of return from people that are in the stock market, you can crush it. And dude, there is trillions of dollars that are tied up in IRAs and they don't even they don't even know that they can invest in true real estate and they just need to know people like us uh, and the people that we teach how to do this business right um it really does change the game right because okay, people so, want to have a roller coaster right so mike's asking okay if he was going to start over today start over brand new start over again um, would you start over the same way or um, or like when you initially started um, or would your your current business model of raising capital um, be like um, like you're talking about six and eight or eight? I wish I, I, I wish. Listen, everything happens for a reason. In the beginning, I I, I gave up most of my deal in the beginning because I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have everybody. Any Yes, so yeah, yeah. Give 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 sixty percent of the deal away, right? I mean, be forty percent, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, I wish I would have had more confidence. I wish I would have had a better mentor to teach and guide mm -hmm. me. Um, to say that I would do it all differently, listen, I, that's the only thing I would do differently is I wish I would have done more deals in two thousand nine and ten and eleven. Like I wish I would have done done nothing but multifamilies from the very beginning, but. Um, but that's just because what I know now, but to say I do it any differently, I don't think so because each little thing like wholesaling teaches you something. It teaches you how to go find a deal, man. Right. That's important. Yeah. And if you can find the deal and then you know what is a good deal, I see one thing you taught me, which is, uh, which was, you know, great is I always, when you look at wholesaling, you take the deal, and as if there's a motivated seller, you want to do whatever it takes to make the deal fit, right? Yep. You're a different story because now you're never really not looking at the seller. You're looking at the deal itself, and if the deal qualifies, great, but you're doing everything to kill the deal. And if it still fits in that box, now you can move forward and you can turn around and uh, and, and purchase that. So, Because um, now, because you're going to keep it in portfolio. You're, you're not going to flip it, and, 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 and in two weeks, never hear from you. You're, you're done. This is something you're going to hang on to for a long time, potentially. So you yeah, want to yeah. that, and that, and that's the beauty because, like, like, with the way we structure this process, you buy an asset and you usually hold them for five years. It takes a year to fix all the broken stuff, a year to fix all the broken tenants, and then you want to operate it for about three years to maximum uh, efficiency. When you right. do that, you've created enough value that you can normally just refi the property and take that refi and cash out all the investors. You give them all back right. to now you've got it financed with bank money and you own it yourself. Like, right. That's Nirvana, dude. I know that's a beautiful. You just, you and all, your money, all the money that you just gave them back. They're like, Hey, you got another deal. You got another, like, I want another deal. They're never, yeah, they, want to get back in. <laughs> they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to get it back. Yeah. They want they to go buy them. another apartment deal with. The and you can keep doing that. Wash, rinse and repeat. And, the, here's the real secret. It only takes one deal. How many? One to change your life. Right. It doesn't take five. It doesn't, you don't have to do a hundred. You don't have to do 10 in a month. It just takes one deal. Hold it for five years, sell it, make profit, buy another one. And you're probably set from there. You can probably quit your day job. So uh, Katie's asking, can you do a 1031 exchange into an apartment? Mm. Absolutely. From a house. From like a house, so you get a house and you own it, and can you sell the house and then put, you know, let's say you have a hundred grand in a house, can you ten thirty one into an apartment? Yes, you, you sure can. Right now, you have to have it set up, and now it gets a little difficult if you're going to raise capital and bring other people into the deal with you. Um, yeah. You would have to use an attorney. But if you, 
Yeah, if you do a smaller unit, if you get a fourplex or a fiveplex and you get a hundred grand for it, you could essentially do a 1031. Yeah. You're a hundred thousand dollar profit from your single family deal, buy a fourplex, 1031 exchange, not have to pay any taxes and be, you know, bueno. And now that's the other part is it doesn't have to be a hundred units plus. I teach it that way because, yeah. and the reason I do is I know that a hundred units affords management and staff. I like management and staff because Corey's a lazy investor. Corey's the most mm -hmm. lazy. But there's a picture behind me that's sunsets and palm trees. That's the life that I'm trying to live. I'm not <laughs> trying to do a lot of work. I want to go on a lot of vacations. And so, and to do that right, 100 units is for me the right level because it affords people to manage all the stuff that I want to do. But you can yeah. even do it though if you don't. And most of these people are not. You guys are not afraid of work. Buy a buy a fourplex, right? Because right. if one unit leaves, you still have three fourths of the income coming in. Right. Exactly. Tenant, one tenant leaves. You've got you know nine tenths of the income coming in. That's the beauty of having because if you have a one single home and someone leaves, you're 100 percent vacant, and that's a tragedy. And if it's vacant for a couple months, all your profit for the year is gone. Gone, so, done. No, of, I've, I've been there. Yeah. Houses, yeah, I, I, I'd rather, I'd much rather do apartments. So Mike Tilly says, I think most of the people have our problem is coming up with the capital purchase, the multifamily. So. Like earlier in this um, interview, um, um, Corey talked about uh, raising capital and what that takes and what's this entail. But Mike, you definitely got to join us at Extreme Freedom because he's going to do a whole presentation. It's going to be primarily about obviously multifamily, but the key component of multifamily is raising capital. If you understand the component of raising capital and you understand how to qualify a deal, then literally, you know, you know, uh, I mean, the, the world is a, right. There's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't accomplish. If you had access to, let's say theoretically, Mike, you had access to $20 million of capital, right? And uh, and and they were coming to you saying, hey, I'll, I'll give you $20 million and uh, just give me an 8% return. You would be on a hustle right now looking for, you know, looking for the best asset you can put it in. What's the best asset? Multifamily properties, student housing, right? Even uh, mini storage is a great play. Um, but multifamily is a great thing to put that. And now, now you'd be hunting. So if you did that, and there's not one deal that you couldn't come up upon where you could uh, leverage that 20 million with bank financing. Um, imagine if you placed all that 20 million and you had loans on all the par apartments at 70%, right? So how much money? That, that that's a lot of that's a lot. It's about a hundred million dollars worth of assets you can control. Think about this, Sean. Like, so, because I want to go from a place of honestly, like, if you were just a, a you know, your wholesaler guy, and because, and you yeah. look at 100 units is probably too much. So let's water it down. Let's say it's a 20 unit building, and, you know, maybe it's a, a $700,000 $700, purchase, and you need $250,000 to buy it. That's two people, maybe two and a half people, three people, to give you $75,000 a piece. Right. I teach you how to do that all day long, twice on Sundays. It is a very much a just a meeting people and explaining and having some systems and some processes to educate them about the story and why. Because people right. will want to fund this kind of stuff all day long. And because most people, honestly, they do not trust the stock market. No one's forgotten the taste of their mouth when the day that their value was zero or 50%, and they looked at their broker and the broker said, it's the market. It's the market. They, they don't care. Yeah, they feel like they're completely out of control and there there is no common sense behind it when you have a great company that's a blue chip stock that all of a sudden goes out of business, right? And you're going, what, what, why did that happen? And people, I mean, people lost, you know, half of their net worth. You know what I mean? Just ridiculous. So, and, and there is another a potentially downturn coming. I don't think it's going to be as bad as it was. Um, who knows when that's going to happen, but what is the best hedge against that? Cash flow properties. Now, I look back in 2008, 2008, 2009, that was a tough time. I was in the wrong asset class. I was in land. I got hammered during that time, and that made me go back and look at all the all the people that made it, all the, all the asset classes that did amazing, and guess what? The primary asset classes that did great 
was uh, student housing was uh, cl uh, class B and class A, uh, multifamily, and, um, and mini storage, right? Th those are the ones that did incredibly well. The storage, um, you know why? Sean, they cash flowed. Most of those they cash, flow. cash flowing. The only ones that really lost is if their loan was due exactly when that crash was happening and there was no new bank financing, right? Right. But Everybody that didn't have a loan coming due that still had a you know, life left on their loan and they didn't have to go find new money, they just cash flowed through it. And that's really the beauty of this process is if you will buy for cash flow and, you know, whether it's that 10 unit deal or whatever it is, you don't have to start high. Most people graduate. Now, I'm a little bit of the exception, but I'm just telling you, you can start with a fourplex and just buy another fourplex and buy another fourplex. And next thing you know, you got 50 you know, fourplexes. And that's a great, and those, those are income streams that never leave you. And then from there, it's just really getting the confidence to say, well, I've taken all these people. Now I've got investors that are giving me their money. What if I went to a little bit bigger asset class? Right. right? Or buy a bigger unit in one spot. And, and because the rules of um, uh, proximity, they work in your favor when you buy more assets in one location. So when you buy a 250 unit or 300, like we're buying Campus Evolution, 356 uh, beds in one spot, um, there's scale of economy there. We right. only have one yard to, to, to mow. We have one pool to clean, not 10 pools or whatever it is. And right. um, you get scales of economy and you can actually make more money doing bigger deals because it's all in one spot. Exactly, exactly. So, um, it's going to be, he's going to crush it. Um, you definitely want to be at extreme freedom in, um, October, October 25th through the 27th. There's a link right there under our thing. It's extremefreedomlive.com. Make sure you go there. Seats are filling up fast. It's assigned seating, uh, through the entire event, but the, the event's going to talk about if you're brand new getting started, we're going to show you how to get your first check. And then we're going to show you how to quit your job and go full time. Then we're talk, going to talk about being an entrepreneur and building to $100,000 a month. And then the highest evolution of a real estate investor is exactly what Corey's doing right now, which is raising capital and buying and syndicating apartments. That is the top level. In our top level masterminds, that's what we talk about. That's what we're discussing um, because that is where we want to go. We want to use this. And it's essentially can be a five year plan. Using, if you keep your wholesaling business, you're doing $100,000 a month in revenue. As you're doing that, you're pouring that cash into, into uh, like Corey's methodology. Um, and, uh, and literally in five years, not only could you have a thriving wholesaling business, but you also could have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of units that's paying you every single month without your effort, which is amazing. So go to Extreme Freedom Live dot com get your tickets before they are sold out it's going to be an amazing event absolutely game-changing will change your life um and uh for these people any last words you'd say Corey? man i'm just going to tell you i love this whole process sean i love the whole wholesaling i believe i'm a i start off as a wholesaler i truly right. believe that is the absolute right place for 99 percent of the people that come into real estate you will lean you will learn all the fundamentals and your teaching is sound. It is legit and it works. I know that for a fact. And then you can take right. that, your whole strategy, what you just said, when you believe and, and bring it up to that level and you graduate, dude, you will change, your life will change forever. And to get to the top of, of this apartment thing, listen, look at the smile on my face, okay? <laughs> I, I'm true. I am true. Like, I'm just an average cat. I barely met out of high school. I'm not that smart. I'm the guy that carries the axe. But I love my life and I love the freedom. And Sean teaches you how to get there. And it's a magical thing. So I'm looking forward to sharing, brother. Well, you're a key component, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. You're going to leave. Here's the bottom line. Coming to Extreme Freedom, you're going to leave. Ex you're going to know exactly a game plan and how to do your first deal, how to scale it to $100,000 a month, and how to build legacy wealth. Corey Pearson is going to show you exactly how to do it. So when you leave Monday, you're going to have an entire five-year blueprint. If you dedicate five years, you work hard, you keep your head down, you stay focused, 
right? You put the blinders on like the horse has there, and you do that, guess what? You're going to end up five years from now an incredibly successful, wealthy, thriving person with all the freedom in the world, and you can go to places like Corey, you know, and uh, he loves going to Hawaii. You go to Hawaii, what, like every other week or something like that? You like <laughs> a lot of house there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is awesome, so um he's awesome so hey Corey, thank you so much for your time you rock thank you guys for joining us here really appreciate it see you at extreme freedom it's going to be an amazing event and Corey, you are the best appreciate it bro thank you